So we might not see Ty Chandler step up beyond the role he already has, but why? What's going on? Let's deep dive it on the Locked On Vikings podcast. You like that on three, one, two, three. You, like it! you are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, where we're always trying to learn something new. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much for those of you who do listen every single day. My hashtag everydayers. I love hearing from you. If you are new, hello. My name is Luke Braun. You can find this show wherever you find your favorite podcasts, whether it is an audio listening place like Sirius XM, which you can find uh, live broadcasts of all the games on Sirius XM radio or the app. Uh, you can also find the show on YouTube or Amazon Fire and Roku. Just download the Locked On Minnesota Sports app on those smart TVs. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Today on the show, a little bit of a deep dive thing going on. Um, full disclosure: I'm recording this a lot earlier than I usually would because I got travel plans. So. Um, here's how this is going to work. We got crossover Thursday that is going to go up on Thanksgiving. Obviously, uh, you know, listen to it later. Uh, if you've got a, a car ride or something, please enjoy. Um, Friday, not sure if there's going to be a show. We're, we're leaving that up to the, the powers of Wi-Fi connection and, and whether or not, um, there is, there is room. I'm going to be kind of rural. So, May or may not have a show. Uh, if not, we'll do the bold predictions and, st and stuff on Monday. Going to play that by ear. But for today, there's three things that I want to talk about. First, I want to kind of go a little deeper onto my running back takes because um, I have gone pretty hard on this, like everybody calm down about Madison thing, and I want to really defend myself. Um, but I also want to make it a little more about Ty Chandler too, because it's not just get rid of Madison. That also means put in Ty Chandler. What do we think of him? Uh, also talk a bit about Jordan Addison, the day he had uh, against the Broncos and Ivan Pace, who uh, had to step up into a much bigger role. So how did he do? Uh, a lot of this has other companion content as well. Go to patreon.com slash Luke Brown NFL. You can see an hour long breakdown of the running backs. Uh, just about every carry that those guys had, almost every carry that those guys had is in that one. And there is an Ivan Pace breakdown that is coming out as well on that and on the wide left sub stack, uh, which I am absolutely writing for of my own accord with no coercion or blackmail. So let's go to Alexander Madison and Ty Chandler. And the first thing to talk about when you're doing running backs is what the read is. It's a lot like the, you know, you screenshot a wide open receiver and say, why didn't the guy throw it when in reality that guy either wasn't in the progression or that guy actually isn't open because there's a safety coming that you're just, that just doesn't look as close as he is, but he's coming, you know, that stuff can happen a lot with running backs. So let's all get on the same page about what these reads are. Um, if you want, watch, th this is going to be uh, like the vast majority of run schemes in the NFL fall into what I'll, I'll, I'll categorize them in three ways. I'll say counter, but basically anything with a puller, the read is follow the puller. Uh, and on counter where there's two pullers, you follow the second puller. So whoever is the, the lead puller is essentially your lead blocker. If you have a lead blocker, you follow him. On zone, which is where the Vikings live, that's their staple run. You want to see the running back aim themselves at the rear end of the tackle, of the play side tackle. So if they're running left, left tackle. If they're running right, right tackle. And then essentially you pick a gap from there. And you just go from that kind of front to back. So if you're running to the left, you aim yourself at the left tackle. You peek and check if, if the outside edge is going to be there. It almost never is unless the defense gets caught doing some kind of weird run stunt. So it almost never is. Um, so you peek that. And then you just go B gap, A gap, A gap, B gap, C gap. You just read all the way across, right? So as you're watching those plays, and I will go over that a lot on the Patreon post that you can see on patreon.com slash Luke Braun NFL. 
ask like, okay, what gap is the gap here? Like, wh- where do you go? If you're reading that out, like left to right or right to left, uh, what's the first one that's there? And you'll almost always with Madison, he almost, you'll, you'll almost always predict where he is going by just like pausing the video at a certain time and looking at it. Right. And for him, the challenge is for the running back, the challenge is doing that without having to pause. <laughs> that's, I'm no running back, so I get to pause. I'm, I'll give myself that handicap. But, uh, the, Challenge is doing it quickly, right? Um, the third kind is duo or any real like straight up and down run where um, they will just they, they just run straight like direct, uh, usually right at the A gap. The Vikings also have a play. I'm going to start calling it zone cut where the offensive line will block like zone, but the running back will run it like duo. And essentially they're trying to get everybody to do a bunch of lateral motion and then just like run straight to the vacated area. Um, and I think that it's kind of the same thing. So you run straight ahead. You basically aim yourself at the nose tackle or at the a gap of the side that you're on. So basically run at the center's pocket is maybe a good way to to think about it. Run right at the center's hip pocket. And if it's there, then you just take it right. You just take your three yards in a cloud of dust. If you get any kind of push, take it, churn. It's a very physical play. Duo is you're trying for vertical displacement. It's not a touchdown. Duo is not a touchdown play. Duo is a four yards on first down. Let's set up a nice second and six. You know, that's what duo wants to be. If it is not there, then you bounce. So you go either straight up and down or straight east and west on duo. You're not really reading gap, 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 gap like you are on zone, Um, which is going to cause a lot of that. Like if that play was duo and you ran away from a gap that was maybe there because the read told you to, that's not an indictment of the running back. Right. That that is I mean, at a certain point, like, yeah, the running, you know, you got the rock, you got the franchise, right? Just pick a gap, improvise. You have that leeway to improvise if you want to. But I'm not going to kill a running back for for not taking that. I, I think that's kind of um, it, it. that's like the the out of structure Mahomes play that like only certain guys can make. And I don't really expect that of any of the guys in the Vikings room. I would love it if they had, you know, Saquon Barkley. Um, maybe maybe we can get spicy in the offseason or something like that. But that's not really what I'm going to expect. Um, I want them to read out the play properly and then create in the space that that play gives you. So when you bounce on duo, let's say you, you get up to the a gap and you don't like it and you want to bounce that to the outside. Um, you bounce away from the Mike linebacker, whoever is declared as the Mike linebacker, uh, and against the Broncos, they only had one linebacker. So it was very easy to see which way you're supposed to bounce. Uh, and essentially you're racing that linebacker to the edge. If you can get out and around that guy, turn the corner, it becomes an explosive play. So that's why you bounce away from him. You take whatever angle you can take to get away from that guy and beat that guy in the race. So here is what I kind of came up with. I'll go over the conclusions quickly. If you want to see my work, if you want to see the guts of it, go to Patreon. But Alexander Madison reads those out more consistently correctly. Ty Chandler, what's holding him back? The, The question I posed at the beginning of the episode Sometimes on zone, he'll just like go up a, 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 a clogged B gap that's got a guy in it thinking he can burst past that dude. Um, but this ain't the SEC anymore. You, you're, you, you can't. <laughs> and, and, and he's gotten caught trying to sort of cash a check that he wrote that he can't cash. Um, and a lot of times, like if you think about it, there's a gap with, uh, you know, one one like both the defenders, let's say, are on the right side of their respective offensive linemen, and both those guys are pretty far apart, if you can imagine that for me. Um, and so that creates a big gap, and there's a guy in that gap, but he's very far to one side of that gap because he's still on the shoulder of the lineman. And then there's a bunch of room between him and the next guy. Chandler wants to take that, but you got to squeeze it like all the way to that, to the open side of that gap. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get by him. He's going to ankle tackle you. Um, or at least slow you down enough so the rest of the hats in the play can rally. And and Chandler has gotten caught doing that too many times in the limited sample, at least in that that game against the Broncos. He got caught doing that like three or four times. Like, that's a consistent issue. Um, To say nothing about the the pass-pro breakdown, which I think there's actually two of them, but some really cool pass-pro reps as well, so that's just like a consistency thing. As for Madison, the thing that I think is stopping him from just taking this job outright is burst. Uh, And you probably noticed that pretty apparently, right? When it's time to beat someone to the edge on duo or when it's time to bounce something out uh, on zone or whatever, um, he's not bursting through those holes quickly enough and they're closing in on him 
or he's not winning those races to the edge in a way that Ty Chandler can, in a way that Wang Wu can. But it's hard to get to that when you don't trust them to attempt getting that edge when it's correct to do so, right? And for me, that that vision, I guess you would call it vision, but I'm just going to call it like consistently in reading because it's not seeing it. It's, it's decision making. And running back decision making is absolutely a subjective thing. Like you may break the rules as a running back. You If you see it and you think you can get it, yeah, screw what it says in the playbook, go get yards. But if you're wrong, you, you got to kind of take that on the chin. And that's that's where Ty Chandler has been. That said, I think that puts it in a 50-50 place. And I'm very, very comfortable with those two guys splitting reps. I would not be comfortable with Ty Chandler just being the full-time guy. I wouldn't be comfortable with Alexander Madison just being the full-time guy without a, a change of pace that's got a little bit more explosiveness. Um, all that said, I still kind of stick to the real take, which is in the offseason, this is a glaring need. The Vikings really need a running back, and I don't, I would not begrudge them being like pretty aggressive about it. So, uh, I want I want to also get into things with uh, Jordan Addison and how he can kind of take the next step in his career, as well as some talk about Ivan Pace, who is taking another step, many <laughs> this season. So, all that's coming up. Today's episode of Locked On Vikings is brought to you by Game Time, which is a great way to get last minute tickets, flash sale deals on Vikings games, of course, but much more than that as well. Other NFL teams, NBA, go see a Wolves game, maybe a wild game uh, and concerts, theater, everything all over the place. It's a it's a, the Game Time app. Search that out in the app store. And they have all kinds of cool deals and stuff that can help you get last minute tickets. It is a nightmare. I, I, I'm going to be going to the Raiders game in December and getting those tickets. We did this like six months in advance and it was already hard. So if you decide this weekend, like, oh, I would like to go to a football game, like you're going to be pretty out of luck without some, somebody helping you find those last-minute deals that aren't marked up to oblivion. So go to the Game Time app. You can get zone deals where you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats, and they have a picture of their seats so you can see the view from your seat make sure that you're okay with it. The Game Time guarantee also means that you get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-N-F-L for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Moving right along with this Locked On Vikings episode. Uh, hope you guys are having a lovely holiday week. Uh, hope the travel, if you are traveling, has not been too bad. If you need some extra Stuff to distract you from your your friends and loved ones. <laughs> Check out the Locked On Minnesota Sports 24-7 YouTube channel. If you're watching this on YouTube, it'll take you directly to it right afterwards. But otherwise, go to the Locked On Minnesota Sports YouTube channel. They've got a 24-7 live stream of all Locked On Minnesota shows. So Locked On Vikings is on there. Locked On Wolves, Wild, Twins, all of that stuff. Great background listening while you work. Uh, just flick that thing on and forget about it. That's what I would prefer that you do. <laughs> Let's move on to uh, Jordan Addison. And I, I it's been under-discussed, but Jordan Addison had a rough day against the Broncos. Um, it, it wasn't awful, right? I mean, like, he still did get a couple of catches, but there were times, and you can see it on the broadcast, that he just got a little bullied uh, by physical coverage down the field. And for me, that's kind of the next step for Jordan Addison to take is how to deal with that. It's one thing to release off the line, and he does a decent job of, um, this is going to be a theme, getting skinny. Uh, we're going to talk about that a lot with Ivan Pace. But he does a good job of sort of presenting a smaller frame at the release point. So if, if you're going to, if you're a cornerback and you're going to jam that wide receiver, you want to kind of hit him right on the chest, Right. But if he turns his shoulders, that's a smaller target. It's harder to jam you, right? And you're going to be more resilient to that. He does a good job of that. But once you get into the route stem, and in particular, breaking off the route against like leverage that isn't perfect. If you've got a guy playing, you know, inside leverage with his hips toward the sideline, you got to break through him on, a, on an in route, right? Um, and you have to run through a defensive back. Defensive backs get to hold their ground, right? They get a right to be where they are without it being illegal contact, as long as they don't like use their hands and extend and shove. Uh, so a lot of guys will play 
catch technique, which is essentially taking advantage of that rule where you just play flat footed and you make the guy run through you. And I'm a lot bigger than you and you're Jordan Addison. So you're going to kind of just like fall off me and get knocked off your rhythm. Um, that has been exacerbated a lot with Dobbs. Cousins would let that come right with like against the 49ers in the big Addison game uh, and, and against the Packers too. like that. Well, that that route against the Packers right before Cousins got hurt that uh, that I think it was like a, a stick nod. If I remember, or maybe it was just a um, maybe it was just a go with a lot of fancy dancy on it. But um, that was a good route where he got around coverage. Right. And that's kind of what he needs to do is get around it. He did great at this in college. And I think it's there's a a, a familiarity and timing thing with it when it comes like th- it might just be like rookie stuff. He's not quite familiar with the exact timings. And now he's not familiar with the timings at all because there's a new guy in there who times everything and throws everything differently, different velocity, velocity, different footwork and all that stuff. And those little timings when you're not quite comfortable with them. It's like when you don't know what it's supposed to time out like, you don't know how you can break the rules safely. Right. But he kind of break broke the rules in college a little bit by, um, like if he was running an in route, let's say you're supposed to stem that direct, uh, directly a certain way, or, or, you know, it'll say inside stem or slight outside stem or something like that. And he would break those rules to bring the cornerback somewhere where he wants the cornerback to be for how that's going to break. Uh, and he did it with enough speed where he could stay on, on time and he knew exactly how on time he needed to be when he was thrown with Caleb Williams. And he did the same thing with Kenny Pickett. Um, with Dobbs, he's, it's, it's not, um, he's not playing as fast and loose because it's just not comfortable. Uh, and so that means when you got to break through a cornerback, you're getting stopped up and it's not like he's getting held or he's getting swallowed up. Like he's like, it's an offensive lineman. That would be a penalty, right? But it's just enough to knock you off your rhythm where you can't get there. Um, I don't think that that is a persistent issue and Addison has had good games elsewhere. So I don't think that this is like much of a concern at all, but in terms of the, let's talk about what the film told us on uh Sunday night against the Broncos, bad one for Addison game to forget. Let's move on. Try to do this against the bears. Uh, we will have crossover Thursday tomorrow, like I said. So enjoy that on the morning. If you got a big Thanksgiving drive or if you're traveling or whatever, or just listening to it through the, through the weekend, do whatever you want. I'm not the cops. All right. I'm not your dad. Do what you want. (laughs) But let's talk about Ivan Pace next. (laughs) Today's episode of Locked On Vikings is brought to you by Prize Picks. It's daily fantasy made easy. We have a lot of fun every week with Prize Picks. We'll do it Friday, or if we don't have a Friday show, we'll do it on Monday morning uh, with the Prize Picks, Prized Picks. But basically, it is you pick two to six of your favorite players and whether or not they'll do better or worse than their prize picks projection. That can be yards, that can be touchdowns, that can be fantasy points, uh, and you can even slam them together with basketball players. You can have like Jordan Addison more or less than however many receiving yards and Anthony Edwards more or less than however many three-pointers, something like that. Um, You can even combo all that stuff together in all kinds of fun ways. So, Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL. Use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, it's daily fantasy sports made easy. So last week, with a lot going on, I kind of breezed past it when we found out about it, but apparently in the Saints game, Jordan Hicks suffered a contusion, which is a fancy word for internal bleeding, which usually that means bruise, but it can be more severe, on his shin. And apparently that put him at risk for compartment syndrome. Compartment syndrome is when blood swelling restricts blood flow so much that it can start to, like, your muscles don't get the right oxygen and it can cause muscle damage. It can be this really scary thing. And so they took him to the hospital. They did a procedure, a procedure, which with compartment syndrome is usually like an incision to relieve the pressure. Basically, uh, you just cut it open, hope to hope the, the swelling goes down. And depending on the severity of that situation, recovery times can be different. So he goes on IR that leaves, uh, Ivan pace in the position of playing all 55 defensive snaps that the Vikings had. And he did. He played all 55 snaps. There was a little bit of a uh, of a wonder, hey, you know, they just brought in Anthony Barr. Is he going to be the one that gets the snaps? And maybe he ramps up more as time goes on. But Ivan Pace is the guy. 
And I was really curious, okay, Ivan Pace is the guy, how did he do? So I wrote a big long piece at the Wide Left Substack. I did a companion piece on patreon.com slash NFL. So go to one of those places or both if you're really cool uh, and go check that out. But I'll give you the broad strokes right now. So Ivan Pace is really, I think he's coming into his own. And this Denver game, I'm going to be honest, was very hype. I was so excited when I was watching what he did in the Denver game. Um, but first, let me talk to you about like what we've kind of seen from him so far, because I think he was he was such a story of the preseason, and then it kind of fizzled out as more important things started going down. <laughs> uh, but Ivan Pace, still the guy we saw in the preseason, still comes in charging with a big head of steam, right? And he can explode guys, but he is still 231 pounds. So when you get a 335 pound guy on him, especially when you line him up at the line of scrimmage, he'll get blown away um, or he can get blown away is what I'll say. That is that that can be OK, right? Because you can just give him a running start a lot. Uh, and, you know, as a blitzer, he's very evasive. He can dip his shoulder. He can swim around, guys. That helps a lot in the run game as well. Um, in fact, the block evasion is his greatest strength. And I mean, you, you've seen a lot of the screens that he has blown up and, you know, pressures that he's gotten and stuff. Uh, really exciting. So if you give him that running start and then he can like swim somebody or whatever, you, you can get that to work. Uh, but what Flores wants to do is put him, you know, mug him in the A gap or like put him simulating pressure and put him on the line of scrimmage and then either back him off or send him or whatever. And what is unfortunate is if you do that, if you put Ivan Pace on the line of scrimmage, there's nothing stopping the offense from checking into a run that goes right at him. And then suddenly he has no running start. He just has to like stay low and hold up against a guard that's going to be way bigger and stronger than him. Teams have gotten you on that. Um, they ha got that on the Broncos got that. You probably remember, remember the Eagles game and how much they, they did on that. Uh, so that's an issue, but it's a minor one. Um, that's like, you can work around that by just not doing that with Ivan Pace. It's a bummer. You, you wish you could do it with Ivan Pace, but if we don't, everything will be just fine. Um, the other negative that I had in that was there's just some moments where he just doesn't look quite comfortable in coverage, but I don't want that to overshadow the cool evasive stuff that he does. And the real big deal is that he sees and reads and reacts to run plays properly. Like what I was talking about with running back linebacker in run fits moves lightning fast for defensive linemen. You're determining pre-snap a lot what you're going to do. And if you can adjust that post snap based on stimuli, that's great. But a lot of times it's all right. If you go, yeah, I, I'm going to get doubled by these two guys and I just got to hold my ground. All right, let's get down and, and fight. Right. And you kind of know before the snap, what's going to happen for linebackers. It's read and react. And a lot of times it's a race with the running back to read and react to how the trenches develop. Um, so you have to be quick on those things. There's a play against the Chargers that are particularly liked where the Chargers ran pin and pull. So they had a tackle crashing down and then a guard pulls to the, the front side, like the front side guard pulls. And Ivan Pace was lined up against that front side guard. That guy pulled and he immediately was able to take one step before he was able to read what was happening and get to the outside where he was supposed to get struck the run out for no gain. Um, that will translate and be very, very, very sustainable. Being put it, just parking your butt in the right place is half the battle with linebacker, right? And then it comes to evading and all that stuff. But that quickness and especially like the variety of moves, which you can really see against the Broncos, which is very fun. Um, that variety of moves is going to serve him well because he can go up, go swim above you, or he can dip under you, or he even has a pretty good good club with his hand to club hands out of the way that of guys that are bigger and stronger than him. And it works. It's really cool. Um, and, and that is the flashy stuff, you know, that's the icing on the cake. But for me, the cake itself, the bread and butter, the meat and potatoes, I'm hungry is, <laughs> is that he knows what he's looking at and he's reading and reacting properly. And if you're going to be a linebacker that is on the field, every single play, you absolutely cannot afford to get yourself turned around by running backs or, or by, um, you know, tricksy stuff in the run motion and all that stuff. You, you, you can't take that cheese. You have to be able to read the proper keys and understand where you're supposed to go. And Ivan Pace looks so comfortable with that. I think about, uh, Chris Barnes, who I think he's in Arizona now, but, 
Um, I remember scouting him for the Packers a couple years ago when he was a rookie and he was like this kind of similar, like unheralded, like rookie sensation kind of guy. And I remember thinking like, yeah, probably doing great for a rookie, but like that dude is clearly exploitable and you can like kind of trick him. And then Dalvin Cook went for four touchdowns and it was like a lot of it was his fault. Uh, That was the 2020 game. Uh, This is not that. He knows where he's supposed to be. Pretty good tackler as well uh, and really difficult to block. What what else you want, man? Like this rocks. Yeah, he's a little small. I'm like super fine with putting up with that, and we'll put Anthony Barr in whatever, uh, you know, sub package role that we want to put him in. Uh, it's very exciting stuff. I'm really hyped on Ivan Pace. So here's what we're gonna do. Tomorrow on the show, uh, we have Lauren Cox of Locked On Bears. We're gonna have that. I hope you all have a great Thanksgiving as well. On Friday. There might be a show from the sticks. There might not be a show. Might have to wait until Sunday. We'll just see how that goes. But either way, we'll do bold predictions. We'll do our uh, prize picks, prized picks, talk a little bit about the Bears game and uh, how to handle the mobility that uh, Justin Fields presents and all that stuff. And um, we'll, we'll move on from there and then enjoy some Monday Night Football. So have a great holiday, and I will see you guys tomorrow. And as always, skull.